Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Bug Nice coming at you with a quick update. Actually, it's going to be a little over 30 minutes, maybe. Hopefully, I'll get it down to about 20 minutes. I'm going to chop this up real good. But this is the Fan First Friday on Tuesday event that just wrapped up not too long ago. So I'm going to highlight everything that needs to be highlighted, cut the fat, and bring it to you. All right, let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? The fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel legends, imports, mini mates that I'm fucking with. Hype beast we know about. You. Stay buying figs don't know about. Me. So the first few minutes missing here, maybe about four minutes, is just Dan, Ryan, and Dwight kind of teeing things up, throwing a little bit of shade at the people that leaked the images that I, that I posted last night, which they'll do again later as well. When I was editing the video to put up last night, the images had already leaked. They had already started circulating, so I just went ahead and, and finished the video. I was kind of on the fence about putting it out or not, because I figured they would be talking about it today, and so that's pretty much all you missed. And then they jumping right in here, talking about the uh, movie Venom, the Sony Venom. And really fantastic uh, movie packaging. It's an all new sculpt. He's really tall. He's seven and a half, eight inches tall. He's pretty big. Um, he's got kind of our new um, articulation that we have on that retro Spider-Man that everybody loves. It's got the reverse ab crunch and the rocker as well. So you can get him down to some really cool, creepy, low crouch poses. He comes with uh, alternate parts. He's got uh, tongue and no tongue head. He has fist and claw hands, and it's got that white slime kind of fading off um, on his torso and shoulders and the backs of his forearms. So he also looks kind of uh, properly wet. He's got uh, kind of a uh, semi-gloss to gloss mold finish to kind of make him look a little bit more sinewy to better match the movie reference. And he's a pretty cool figure. Um, everything you'd expect, you know, um, is here he is uh, as far as in scale. So... Here he is scaled next to a older uh, Marvel Legends Miles figure, just for the uh, an idea. So he's pretty massive, um, as he was in the film, and a pretty sweet looking figure. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy it. Yeah, he's really large. Also, two per case collector, so anyone interested should be able to, to get one pretty easily. Moving on to the rest of the wave, we're going to go big here with the Build a Figure, which you probably have seen i think people have been mostly excited about it it is none other than venom pool here probably i think he's definitely actually in my top three builder figures for the year probably after like uh you know strong guy and, and sugar man but this was an also an all-new sculpt based off of the contest of champions uh game uh and this character debuted there so dwight show him a little bit more about the awesome venom pool bigger than the theatrical Venom that we just showed by a half inch or so. So he is also massive. He's got a giant backpack that has two giant uh, meat cleaver swords, um, alternate hands. He has uh, sea grips for his swords, and he has claw grips for slashing and tearing. Um, he has a standard uh, ab crunch uh, rotation on his torso, ginormous shoulders, um, Really good range of motion on his head and neck for some cool posing. And uh, he's just massive. Once again, another really big chunk of plastic. So, you know, big guy, a couple of big swords, backpack, um, and some extra hands. So everything you would need for this guy. Really love how we were able to include two sets of hands. So you can have kind of the open hands with the swords in the backpack or holding both swords or any combination, combination of that. So he is the builder figure in this wave. Uh, let's go to one of the, the core figures in the wave. We have Carnage, of course. So this is a new design as well. Comes with the Venom Pool head. Um, and based on you know a little bit of the inspiration from the latest uh, goings-on in the comics. Let's take a closer look at this Carnage figure here. He's got new sculpting details, I think, all over his body. Got some, ten some tendrils on the back. And that new head with the uh, spiral kind of symbol on there. Right, Dwight? He's done four... Um, Carnage figures. Uh, the first one was kind of bare bones. Uh, then we came back and revisited with uh, on the modern body, and then the newer version that came with the uh, alternate blade arm and giant sized claw with the alternate Cletus head. So this one goes next to our new uh, Carnage. That is uh, the big difference is the entire body is sculpted from scratch. He's about the same scale. He's a little bit more thin and sinewy. 
but he's around the same height as the previous carnage. The big difference is the entire body has sculpted uh, muscle sinew uh, texture. So um, where the last uh, couple uh, carnages have been smooth, this guy's got all sorts of grossness going on. Um, we gave him a more classic head, which you see here. We have the um, absolute carnage alternate uh, style head. The body's not quite accurate for how it ended up in the books, but it is um, a really cool variation. So, wow, three for three off the bat. Three all two uh, sculpted figures. The next one um, isn't all new, but it's got some, some new parts here. It is Phage here. So, yeah, we're slowly completing that um, Life Foundation Symbiote 5 team. I believe he's got an, an awesome alternate weapon piece as well. Yeah, his base body is our Bucky Cap body, but he's got new forearms and shins um, and the little backpack piece with those black blades that he has popping out all over his body. And either his left or his right claw hand can be removed and switched into that uh, symbiote blade that you see uh, in the image on screen right now. So, yeah, you know, see so a page. And then you've got the alternate uh, blade arm piece that just pops off whichever hand you want. And then you can have an uh, alternate weapon. If you'd like to see this team completed, I think we have two more characters. Let us know in the comments, and uh, we'll add it to our list there. I'm very happy to announce that in this wave, we have a new version of Morbius. Uh, Dwight, it's the 90s version, right? Yeah, you're right, Dan. It's a version from the 90s. Um, we did the more classic look, uh, once again, a couple of years back. And this is a more uh, <laughs> 90s version. It's got all sorts of leathery, strappity, buckly things, you know, 90s, you know, where all those leather jackets and things came from. Uh, tattered, purplish uh, cape and a really cool uh, head sculpt. Um, he's got his mouth open to reveal his fangs. Uh, the hair is blown back on this version, where the prior version was a little bit more calm. It's missing its cape. So here's old Morbius next to new Morbius. But they look really cool, um, crazy uh, windblown hair this time around. And he also comes with fist, fisticuffs, and you can pop them off. And he's got a little wrist bracelets that you got to make sure you don't lose. Put them wrist bracelets back on, pop on his claw hands, and he's got awesome slashing claw fingers as well. Yeah, we all know that a new movie of Morbius is coming, so hit on the live stream. Let us know in the comments section if you want us to also make you know, possibly a movie version of that. You know, I think Jared Leto, that would be cool, right, Dwight? That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see what he looks like in the film. Just as excited as all the fans are to see what comes next. Dwight, are you saying that it's nice to be surprised by things sometimes? I actually... Not have things spoiled for us? I actually enjoy being surprised by things, Ryan. Um, the internet is a dark and horrible place, uh, and uh, it uh, quite often takes some thunder away from our wonderful, thought-out presentations. But... I guess it all comes from a place of passion, because if the fans are dying to know more, you know, you can't fault them for wanting to dive in there and find out whatever secrets they can. We love the passion. I just had to throw that in there. Sorry to interrupt. But uh, let's finish off this wave. So these two figures that we're, that Dwight's going to show us, uh, we kind of revealed at New York Toy Fair. The first one is uh, Ghost Spider. This is all based off of Season 3 from Marvel's Spider-Man, the animated series, which is really focused on the Maximum Venom line. So, first character is Ghost Spider. We've done a couple of uh, Spider-Gwen. She's had a couple name changes over the years in the past. Uh, this figure probably has the longest tongue of any action figure I've ever worked on. Um, it's really weird and gross uh, coming out of the bottom of her jaw. Um going the full length all the way down to the floor. So she's pretty gross. Her um, ballet slippers have turned into spikety, pointedy feet, and it, the hood really sits uh, far over her face, recessing it, giving it a nice shadow cast on her head. Um, you can see, I know, I'm sorry, put that some more in the center, and then you can kind of see how deep it goes. So it's a really massive, creepy, cloaky hood um, with a big, uh, long tongue, spikety toes, spikety forearms, so, she's pretty cool. You can't have, you know, maximum venom without Miles, right? Exactly. So, uh, here's Miles from the new Maximum Venom animation. Um, he is the same scale as what you'd expect from Miles in the past. Um, we've done a couple of variations of him already. Um, and this one has giant clawed feet, kind of oversized slightly, and oversized uh, oven mitt claw hands as well. 
Um, the texture on his head is uh, sculpted, so it's got a kind of a cool raised web feel across his head and forearms, um, going down into his feet. And then the base body is the miles that we've seen in the past. So once again, if you're familiar with those figures, if you have them, either of these two variations from earlier in the lines, you can see that he fits perfectly in with the scale and size. He's just got some really cre creepy oversized features this time with the big hands and, uh, and feet and claws. If you love that Maximum Venom type of look, don't forget we also had this year a Venomized Captain America. So, all right, what else we have? We have an, uh, an item that we uh, did not code name in our system, so it's been out there a little bit, but this is the uh, fourth Walgreens uh, exclusive here in the U.S., the theme this year has been uh, kind of Avengers-y. We had um, Iron Man 2020, we had Moon Knight, and so the figure coming out later this fall for Walgreens in the U.S. and in Canada at EB Games is, of course, Silver Centurion. Uh, let's take a look at the impact shot. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff. He totally uh, fills out the package. He's got enough blast for his hands and or his feet. It's the same overall scale as our 80th anniversary Iron Man, which everybody seems to have uh, taken to very positively. So if you like the overall feel of that figure, you'll know what you're getting with this guy. Um, he's got a lot of new parts, though. Uh, new PVC, the reds on his legs to match the designs from the comics. He's got an all-new torso with that new shoulder design that we're using that allows it to rotate up and around um, more seamlessly before. Uh, than used before, and uh, you don't have to worry about the shoulder pads falling off and getting lost in the bottom of your toy trunks. They're, you know, they're not going anywhere on this figure, which is cool. Um, he comes with alternate hands. He has two fists. He has two hands that have the repulsor blast. You can use the super blast, as you see in this image, and the center cones pop out of those to be used as uh, foot repulsors or smaller blasts. So you can kind of uh, mix and match the, the elements however you choose to kind of get a little bit of customization and fun to the figure. Um, but as you can see, he is looking really nice. Um, and all of his uh, painted silvers, molded reds. The shoulder pad is inset behind the shoulder ball and it's keyed into the torso. So it rotates forward and back. And the arm still rotates out. But you know some of the older designs, the shoulder pads would actually be keyed and they'd flip up out of the way. Now it looks very seamless in any, uh, any way you turn it all the way around. And you can yeah. still put this in, any, in any way um, you would want. But you don't have to ever worry about that thing falling off and getting lost because it, it, it doesn't come out because it's trapped within the ABS torso. So that is a that is the Silver Centurion. Again, he is coming out later this fall. I'm not going up for pre-order today. Uh, if the pre-order uh, date gets locked in, we'll of course let you all know. But that will be uh, you know at Walgreens in the U.S. and EB Games in Canada. Just to recap where we stand with the Sentinel package, you get that 26-inch tall, fully articulated Sentinel. We went back and we added in a second bendy wire tentacle, so you could have one for each uh, palm there. Should you choose to do that, it also has a six-inch Bastion figure with a Sentinel Prime alternate head. He's, he's you know, down in the corner there. And then, kind of you know quicker than we anticipated, but we had built in uh, three tiers at varying levels, and they were all met super quick. So thank you to, to all the fans for the support. From left to right, we've got that oversized Master Mold alternate head. In the middle there, we've got the combo of the Battle Damage normal head with the Battle Damage hand. His right hand there, you see, with the fingers blown off there. And then uh, lastly, we added a second six-inch figure, the female Sentinel Prime. So all of that, everyone gets everything you see there. Um, and so, you know, we think it's a pretty good value. I mean, wait, yo, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yo, Ryan, Dwight, I got, uh, I think I got some breaking news, man. Breaking news? What could that be? Very pleased to announce uh, another tier for the Sentinel, which will be unlocked at 16,000 backers. We are currently at a little over 14,000 globally, and you can see it here. Dwight, take them through this extra accessory. Yeah, this is something that we've been working on uh, just for the last couple of weeks, and as early as this morning, uh, I was reaching out to our wonderful friend, Jesse Falcon, who says hello to everybody. Um, I forget sometimes that it's three hours earlier where he lives, so I send him texts sometimes when I get up forgetting the fact that I'm waking him up at four or five in the morning. So 
while Jesse says hello, I have to say, sorry, Jesse. Uh, but we were going through uh, this guy to make sure that he was happy with it. And uh, he had some great insights as far as how we should deco this thing. So with Jesse's help, um, we are looking to do a tri-sentinel head with three different uh, face plates and three different color palettes so that you can really get credit for the three different sizes of this big guy. Um, on the far left, you see kind of the standard variation with all these cool uh, cords and cables coming down to kind of represent creepy teeth on the silver face plate. And in the middle of the screen, you have a golden face plate with kind of a, this is kind of the crowd control version. So it's kind of got the speaker vents and the uh, projection piece uh, for the mouth. And on the far right, you have a bronze faceplate with multiple repulsor cannons. So this is the, you know, get the hell out of the way uh, mode for the Sentinel if it wants to blast the hell out of whatever's in front of it. So um, all versions will have translucent eyes so that when you position whatever face in the forward fronting view, they will glow like the eyes of the other heads. Um, and it's just a real cool, another piece of uh, Marvel and X lore that was uh, really fun to, uh, to, to work on. And here you see it uh, attached to the uh, uh, body itself. So to be clear, for those of you uh, who may not be familiar from the comics, this is one alternate head that has three different faces around it, and you can rotate it you know, to look at any of the gold, silver, or bronze profiles that you wish to display. So one huge new alternate head to make another character. Um, if you have multiple Sentinels or you want to display your one Sentinel um, in multiple ways. August 24th at 11.59 p.m., end of the day, Eastern Standard Time, and then it will be no longer available. So if you're on the fence, jump right in now. Teasers we like to do. This is just information, nothing too specific. We want to get those, get those um, speculation uh, on, online going, and so we have a couple of facts about upcoming future Legends figures that will give you some hints as to who they are. So we've got a couple of them here. We will be doing a character that was in the Toy Biz 6-inch Legends line, but never Hasbro 6-inch Legends line. That's teaser number one. All right, number two. This is a character that will be in the line that was done in the... Uh, early years, uh, pre the new uh, standard for Legends. So there's a guy from the Hasbro side, uh, possibly from the Toy Biz side as well, but from the Hasbro side that uh, is going to be getting a significant update uh, coming uh, this year. All right, the third teaser here is a character that Hasbro did in the three and three quarter Marvel Universe slash Infinite series slash several rebrands, but um, it has never been in the six inch uh line so we will be upscaling this character into an awesome new six inch figure all right and last but not least our last fees is going to be a character that has has never had an action figure before so tell us what you think these characters are going to be these are all actually going to be figures that are going to be coming out in 2020 so let us know what you think those four are all right well thanks everyone for joining us we are in and out in under half an hour how about that um venom wave Movie Venom, Venom Pool Build-A-Figure, up for pre-order later today. Get hyped for Silver Centurion coming later this year. Sentinel, of course. Again, we added the Tri-Sentinel uh, accessory. And once we get to 16,000 backers, which we are fast approaching uh, with one week left, and then some, some fun things for you to ponder. Well, I mean, you know, you mentioned the you mentioned Ven Venom, the movie one, and we talked about his uh, symbiote kind of pool, slimy skin, right? And this is the, I know the summer's coming to an end, it's wrapping up, which is sad, um, you know, but, you know, it's uh, important to remember that you got to take care of yourself, you know, that sun out there in that sky is still very big and very bright, and if you're not careful, you can get burnt pretty, pretty bad, um, you know, from, you know, you know, you don't want a really bad sunburn, you know, you know, burns really hurt, they, they really mess things up, so, you know, you don't want to be left out there without your proper skin condition, whether that's lotions or, or, or whatever it is. Just, you know, take care of yourselves out there, people. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Hit us up in the comments with uh, your 
Feedback today, everyone. Have a, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. All right, so chop that down to less than 20 minutes and just going to recap going backwards here. So the very last thing that they showed looked like it was going to be a burnt up <laughs> Thanos. I guess it'll be Thanos after using the Infinity Stones. That's what it looked like to me. So maybe we'll be getting another final battle of Endgame wave of some sort. You know, Bandai's putting out all of their final battle edition uh, figures. So maybe Hasbro's coming back with more stuff from Avengers Endgame. The team posed some questions as hints to figures to come in 2020 actually so all of this stuff that they hinted at is supposed to be dropping in 2020. A character in the Toy Biz 6 inch Legends line but that was never released in the Hasbro 6 inch Legends line. I already saw people speculating that that's t that's Toad. We'll see. Uh, number two was a character in the Hasbro 6 inch Legends line pre 2014. Three character in the Hasbro 3.75 inch line but was not in the Hasbro 6 inch Legends line. Plenty of those still left I think. There was a lot of stuff that three quarter inch was getting when they were really heating up that a lot of us in the six inch line were salty about so i'm gonna have to go back and look and see what's what there and then the final question was a character that has never been an action figure before that's pretty tough let me know in the comments what you guys think they talked about the sentinel project which has just under a week remaining for anybody who hasn't back to back or anybody who has that wants to go in for more and they said they're going to add one more tier at 16,000 backers we are just over 14,000 and I would like to get any additional add-ons so the tri sentinel head is is fine I like the fact that he mentioned the uh, translucent eyes or the light piping in the eyes that'll be cool for displaying for sure they unveiled the Silver Centurion Iron Man, which I'm definitely excited and happy about. There's been a rumor for a while that we would be getting this figure, and they're going to stick to the script and put him on the 80th anniversary Iron Man buck, which is good. I'm all for it. Some new things there in terms of articulation or in terms of engineering. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to get him in a great flight pose without tearing up the shoulder pads in any way or them flipping off, as Dwight mentioned. This is going to be a Walgreens exclusive, so I know a lot of people not really happy about that, but this is definitely one that I have to own, and it looks really good. And hey, we one step closer to completing a classic West Coast Avengers. And then they just went over the Venom Pool Build-A-Figure Wave in detail. So six figures in the wave, but you only need five to complete the Build-A-Figure. For me personally, I'll be interested in the Carnage, being that it's a new buck. Some new sculpting in there, butterfly joints. For the most part, every uh, Carnage that we had prior is, <laughs> is going to be trash now, except the one that came with the Cletus Cassidy head. I guess you could utilize that, but Carnage is a must-own for me. They could keep the Miles Morales and the Gwenpool or the Ghost Spider or whatever they have her labeled as. The Morbius is cool. I hate the windswept hair though. It is confirmed as a classic Morbius, comic-based Morbius. But they did mention the fact that they may do uh, a movie version at some point. Phage, you gotta get if you want to complete all the symbiotes. And the Sony Venom looks really good. For me personally, I feel like there's some potential there to put a comic-based Venom on that buck. So I'll support it. Unfortunately, no new news about the Hellfire Club box set. I guess there's nothing new to report there. No information on the Hellfire Club goon. No information on those yellow gloves. No information on the back scratcher <laughs> slash stilt man part. So we still kind of in the dark for some things that I thought they would talk about today. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned for the Ultimate Riders Punisher review. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. As always, rate, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell down there. And until next time, peace. That's crispy.